Hi, Achim Schlöffel, Inner Space Explorers. Today I would like to tell you a little bit about how to set up a shot line for deep wreck diving. Um, the reason for that is that I see a lot of really strange procedures out there and there has been a <laughs> really nasty accident uh, a couple of months ago with two fatalities actually while setting up a shot line. So um, we received also a couple of questions how we do that. So at the moment we are here in Elba on the Ghost Track project and I would like to take the opportunity to show you our setup. Um, of course that's not the holy grail of how to do this. That's the way we do it and I will tell you why we do it that way and um, maybe that helps you also to set up your shot line in the safest possible way. All right. Generally talking about the length of the shot line, you always want a straight connection to the wreck. I mean, you do not want a wreck in 50 meters of water and then swim 250 meters down that, uh, that angled line. So for that reason, the worst thing you can do is just a line with a float on top and then throw it in the water because it will never be a proper guideline. Um, either it's too short and it's probably drifting away or it's too long then you don't have a proper a proper rope, go, rope going down. So you need a counterweight. Uh, which brings me to the length of the rope. We normally say 10-15 meters longer than the depth. And um, the counterweight is this one here, which in that it's like uh, four and a half kilos of lead. Um, and it's not painted orange because of ISE, it's painted orange because this thing's hanging free in the water and if you have a bit of surf, actually it will do this, it will start to bump up and down. So while divers are in decompression, you know, going up, there's a high chance they get it on their head, which is not, not a good thing. So we painted it in a bright color so it's easy to spot and people are safe and obviously that's something that has to be in the dive briefing. On the other end, is the shot, uh, the shot weight. In that case, that's uh, 28 kilos of lead on a, on a belt. You see it's secured two times, so the belt cannot open. You see that there's a swivel in it. Um, the reason for that is when you throw it in, usually it starts to spin. Um, and that means you have a, a line that's starting to spin and coil up. So you want that swivel in there. And there's a, a proper eye in there. So not just a knot. And as you see, there's a tarkling. Uh, if you want to know how this is done, there's a video on the YouTube channel, how to do a tarkling stronger than a knot. Uh, it's actually two on top of each other. And then all of this is soaked in, uh, in super glue. So no way this is, is opening up. Um, so you want a, a weight as heavy as possible. So it goes down as fast as possible. If you had, <laughs> I recently somebody, saw somebody using a brick like from house building and that is like going down like this and obviously it never hits the wreck, it goes somewhere. And there's always these people who have no idea about blue water and buoyancy and whatever. So they actually try to hold on that rope and swim down or whatever. And then you come down and there's no wreck but just sand and a drifting weight and that usually is uh, not what you want. So take a heavy weight. The heavy weight on the other side brings up the problem, how do you get that back on board? The last thing you want is, especially after the compression dive, to stand there and pull up 100 meters of, of line with 20, 30, 40 or whatever kilos of, of weight. Actually on real deep stuff and heavy currents, we sometimes used even like engine blocks, obviously cleaned without oil before some smart air starts to complain. Um, and I mean, that's then like 200 kilos and I mean, there's no way of lifting them. And obviously there's no option of leaving them at the bottom. So I'll show you quickly how we do that. And later on, I'll show you also on the boat, the, um, the weight, the line runs through that float, which is called, a, it's basically it's a ball fender or a Norwegian float it's called. So it has a lot of lift, it's very stable and it runs through there. And then we have the counter weight on the other end. And what we do is we have this, um, this break in here. Uh, which is from climbing, it's a rope break. So the weight, the line can go through this freely, but if it pulls on the other side and uh, this counterweight is removed, you actually, you actually can't. So what we do is, um, when we want to bring up the line, we go with the boat to that uh, float, we get the counterweight in, remove that, uh, that additional clip, and then just uh, 
take a bit of rope, put it on the back of the boat, full throttle. The resistance of that float um, presses it underwater, so there's a lot of resistance and the line starts to go through that shickle and starts to come up. So when I slow the boat down, the meanwhile floating um, main weight cannot go back down because of that break, so I have the line on the surface, I can easily pull it in, put it in the in the bin, maybe I have to repeat that a second time, but then I have the float with the main white weight directly under it, and I can just lift that in the boat, no hassle, nobody gets the compression issues, um, perfect. So now comes the really important part, how do we set this up? Um, so what we have here on top is a, is a it's a little float ball with a couple of meters of line. So if you have current, it's actually always nice to have this attached to the to the main line uh, to the to the float. So it's a good indication for the skipper uh, where to position himself before he drops the divers. And on top, if uh, small people on the line, it's always nice somebody can just grab this and um, hold himself in the current. So how do we how do we do that in a proper way? The float with the rope break is at the counterweight, so that's the last thing that goes in the water. So what you want to do is you want to have these things outside of your bin and you start to put the line in that bin like this. Make sure there's no coils. Take your time. I see a lot of people just throw that line just somewhere and then or even loose on the boat and then feet get in coils and people go overboard get entangled uh, all kind of uh, things so just put it in there loosely while you do this manually feeding it through your hands you make sure there is no knots or coils or whatever in it and as you have that swivel on the weight it actually doesn't start to do something like this because it always can spin freely so that's an important part of it. So now we have the weight. Weight goes on top and that's basically how I have it in the boat. So if the person that drops the line uh, is ready, you grab the weight throw it in water, the line starts to go out and when it's almost out you just grab the the buoy and the counterweight overboard and everything will adjust itself. The weight will hit the bottom, the counterweight will go down, straighten the line and then when you go down just make sure you follow the line that is a little bit angled and not the one that goes straight down because the one straight down is always the counterweight and if you have a lot of current um, then obviously that doesn't lead to the wreck otherwise they probably are both straight going down you can see them but that's the way you want to do it so we load that in the boat now go out the, set the shot line for the uh, first dive team so we'll show you that on video and later that day we'll also show you how to retrieve it with that special method and i hope you like that um, if so please give us a thumbs up if you have questions please ask them in the comment section and uh, we'd also appreciate if you have a look at facebook and i'll see you next time thank you